What it is a redoubt, you feel me? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Why well, keep fucking up? <laughs> Fuck, bitch. Nightmare in the dream. Hey, bubble gum lotto, straight purple, no green. Kel text 556 with a bean. Diamonds on me, but I didn't have a thing. Look, hey, this the revenge of the fiends. This the revenge of the fiends. This the revenge of the fiends. Turn the nightmare in the dream. Hey, bubble gum lotto, straight purple, no green. Kel text 556 with a bean. Tapping in the Urban Moguls of B. We got a real special guest from the Bay Area. This dude's cut different. I've Marley seen boy. and witnessed the way he does things in the studio. He got some real expeditious work ethic. He goes by the name of Marley Boy, aka Marley B. What's good, buddy? What's happening? So shit, you already know another day. Hell yeah. So where are you from and what is it that you do? From Oakland, California. Shit, I'm an artist overall. Shit, produce, rap, sing, mix, engineer, all that. Okay, so what, where exactly from Oakland you from? Cause you know, Oakland's not big, but it do got certain sections and stuff. Yeah, you know yeah, shit, I grew up in West Oakland, on Pearl Street, you feel me, that's Adams Point. So, not to get too much into politics and whatnot, you know, a lot of things going on nowadays, kind of like back in the days. Um, what was it like, you know, being, being a, a young black man growing up in Oakland? What kind of adversity did you face? Hmm. Well, it was cool for the most part, but you know, it's a lot of different cultures. So, you know, unfortunately, most cultures don't really fuck with, with niggas, you feel me? Or they scared of them. I don't want to say they don't fuck with us, that they fuck with our money and shit. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, they scared, you feel me? So, you know, even in a place like Oakland, you experience racism and shit like that. Because yeah. all sorts of different ethnicities own the businesses, you feel me? Yeah, off top. So, you know, same ass shit. You know, yeah, you call a nigger and all that shit. You motherfuckers watching you all the time everywhere you go. Yeah. The same, same shit. Hell yeah. You know, it's a lot of black owned businesses out there. And I know if you ain't from Oakland or the Bay Area, you don't really know too much who owns what. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the, the different hoods, the different peoples in Oakland. They're what keeps the community going. They keep all the businesses running and stuff. You know, no matter if you're rich, no matter if you're poor, whatever you're going through, there's a reason why stuff's still running. And, and you know, that's a blessing within itself. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. So, growing up in Oakland, West Oakland to be exact, what, what were your kind of hobbies that you do besides, you know, the music stuff? What were you into at first? Sports, basketball. You feel me? Niggas uh, play baseball like everybody else, Babe Ruth and all that shit. You feel me? <laughs> Everett Bonds and all that. Everett Jones, Hammer, all that shit. Hell yeah. And basketball. You know, like, you know, traveling teams and shit. Yeah, the AU and Open all that. Rebels. Yeah. Play for the Rebels and shit. You know what I'm saying? I played against them, so. A lot of the, the sports out there, they, they had an influence on growing up out there, right? Like the Hell Oakland yeah. Raiders, the Oakland uh, A's, and stuff like that. Yeah, man, sports was cool as shit growing up. That's how you know a lot of niggas. Did they, did they give back to the community? I mean, some. You know, I, I say they giving back to the community just by giving us hobby, a hobby, you feel me? Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. they ever come into the community and... and you know, show love and give out backpacks and all that stuff. Shit, I don't really remember that. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't, yeah. I ain't getting no backpacking under nah, that nah. shit. But <laughs> yeah. now nah, it's all good. I mean, you know, every different parts of Oakland, you know, they experience different different things. You know, the east is different from the west. The west is different from the north. And but somehow everybody knows everybody at some point. You know. What yeah, I mean? yeah. And 
that's it's just how it goes. Yeah, that's from shit like that. From, yeah. from playing on teams. The yeah, niggas okay. is from everywhere. You know what I'm saying? That's the quickest way, and that's the, even not just Oakland. I just think people. That's the quickest way people network growing up. You know, and then when everybody gets to high school and whatnot, you know. People take their own paths and they choose what they're gonna become. And you either in the streets or you doing some school shit or you building your own brand and whatnot like that. So you know it's, it's like that everywhere. Hell yeah. So when you were coming up, did you were you into music or like beats or were you just rapping? What, what came first? Shit. Shit. Poetry came first. Shit, I was writing poetry and shit. I didn't even know I was gonna make music or nothing. You feel me? I was just writing poetry and shit. I started making beats when I was like 14. Shit. And I wasn't even rapping then, I was just making beats. Then my brother started rapping and shit. I went to the lab with that nigga when I was like 16. That's when I wrote my first shit, laid some shit down. I just kept going after that. You feel so me? it came pretty natural because I know poetry is basically the same thing as writing raps except you're writing to a beat rather than you're writing out of feeling and you're writing out of just you know yeah, yeah. you know how poetry is man so yeah. where, where'd you start writing poetry at did you have to take classes did someone teach you nah bro it was just i just you feel me i don't really remember how i picked that shit up but shit once i first tried that shit that was it you feel me i was just fucking with it yeah yeah i was fucking with it so, when you start doing music, I mean, who who influenced you to do that? Like, how'd you get started with that? How were you, obviously you did poetry, but how did someone teach you to, this is how you write to a beat, this is how you shit, write the beat, you know what I'm saying? Shit, nobody taught me that shit, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like, I always loved music, that was one thing. Like, I, like before I made music, I listened to music, you feel me? I listened to hella different shit. Hella different shit, bro. I was like the little nigga bootlegging music all night. You feel me? <laughs> so I, I guess it just you know your brain kind of work like that. Yeah. You like take little pieces of shit, so it was easier for me when I first wrote my first shit. I didn't even struggle with that shit. You feel me? I and nobody teach me that shit. You feel me? It was just I just wrote it. You feel me? Yeah. And we went to the lab, and I just shit laid that bitch down. You feel me? And Hell it was yeah. cool too. That shit was decent. That shit was cool. Sometimes that's what it takes, you know, you, you be around the right people and you just re be around a certain, um, I want to say category, but, you know, we call it category, music, it's a category. Um, and you just start picking up on things because you're so influenced by it, you're around it, you're picking up on it, you're learning mm -hmm. game, you're soaking up game and stuff like that. So I'm yeah, assuming sure. that, that that's how you... Uh, you came up really. Yeah, shit. Shout out my big brother Steve. That nigga, you feel me? That was the reason. Reason I wrote my first verse. You feel me? Nigga just told me to hop on. I was like, fuck it. Were you guys at using the uh, house studio? Or were you in nah, the studio? Nah, we had went to. Um, we had went to one of my partners. That had a lab. You feel me? And shit was. It was cool. It wasn't. It wasn't nothing professional. But it was cool though. Yeah. It did the trick. Got the yeah. shit done. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's how you got to start off. You got to start off somewhere. It might not be the most professional, but hey, if you got a mic, you got a computer where you can record, or you got some beats, even if it's just some beats and you're just rapping without recording, you know, that's how it started. That's how rap actually started off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Back in New York and stuff, you was out there just a cappella, you know yeah, what I mean? Ready to go. And shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. So who would you say was, was basically your big supporter? Like, you know, that was Ooh. like, okay, you got some talent, or even if you felt like you were discouraging a bit, you know, you they was like, go ahead, keep going, baby, you got it, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was always my brother, you feel me? My brother used to rap and shit, he stopped, he stopped uh, fucking with the shit, just to, like, push my shit, you feel me? He believed in me more than he believed in his shit when it come to music, you feel me? So my big brother always, he always been a good push. I always send that nigga shit, get his word, you know what I mean? Yeah. Get his little stamp of approval and shit. So yeah, big mm. bruh. I feel you, big bro. Big I feel you, that's how. He I feel the same way, bro, because, you know, I do a little bit of music myself and whatnot, yeah. or I just mess around with it as a hobby and whatnot. And, you know, when I when I hear people, you know, just telling me, like, man, that shit sounds dope. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got a little different style compared to other people. 
and, and, and people I function with it, and you know, I look for that advice from from a someone that that's already been doing it that I look up to. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, big absolutely. shout out to my big bro. Um. So, was it? Obviously, you did poetry. Was it beats that came first, or was it rap that came first? It was the, uh, it was the beats. The my beats? partner, um, my partner, he like nigga, he just put me on, bro. I don't even hear. One day he was just like, bro, I found this little shit, something. It was, it was uh, fruity loops. He was like, yeah, come fuck with this shit. You feel me? Then nigga like, just started fucking with that shit. Like, I ain't have no plans on doing music. That shit, bro, just just like, just nigga slide through. I slid, started fucking with it, and that shit was like the rap. You feel me? I'm, yeah. It was like it just came natural. Yeah, but nobody teach me none of that shit. I just so <laughs> you know. Obviously, there there comes a some kind of confidence within yourself that when you do beats or you do rap, there has to be some kind of spark within yourself in order to keep pursuing it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. What gave you that that? ambition within yourself to be like I could do this I could reach out to to certain artists around the Bay Area around your your you know jurisdiction and whatnot you know how did you reach out to them shit um shit when internet became a big platform myspace and then honestly I should just sell it's like selling the dope or something. You feel me? Whoever got the good prices and the good product, niggas gonna fuck with it. So I always tried to, you know, have a better price than motherfuckers. And eventually, I, I start producing for hella motherfuckers. You feel me? Yeah. All in the streets and shit. And then, you know, when you rap, you got partners that rap. You might have a group or the niggas you show it to. So then that's my shit spreading like that too. Beat spreading like that, they're like, oh, yeah. where you get that from? Word of mouth. You feel me? Yeah. So eventually, it just was like, f f fucking with so many niggas pulling up in so many niggas' hoods with the beats and shit. You feel me? Not being scary, not being on the internet with it, really just pulling up. You feel me? And that shit, and shit just spread. Yeah. So you know when you start getting a buzz out there at a young age, how, how old were you? Shit, when it came to the beats, like boy. Shit, I was probably like 15, 15, 16. Yeah, so when did you start jumping into the music? Like, obviously, like, after poetry? Shit, not that long after. Honestly, I think I was like 13, doing poetry, and then, shit, I started making beats 14. Yeah. Shit, it just happened. Yeah. You feel me? That's what's up, man. Uh, so, do you remember who the first artist was that, that reached out to you, that kind of, like, Bro, I fuck with your music. I fuck with your beats, my man. Uh, shit, I think it was like the first real shit I had produced was my cousin G Molly. Shout out my nigga Molly, RP Tom. You feel me? But yeah, Molly for sure. Uh, my cousin uh Bryce, that had the group. I think it was a uh, Manny Boys. You feel me? And they had uh. I threw them niggas some beats. And they had got that nigga uh, Cuzzo Fly on the shit from Thiz back in the day. So that was like really the, they was like really the first niggas I was producing for. Yeah. You feel me? He's still rapping too. Shout out Molly. Hell yeah. So obviously you caught your buzz around 14, 15 years old doing beats. G Molly was the, the first person to really function with you and, and you know, get things done. Who other who other artists in the in the Bay Area or Oakland, wherever it is in the Bay Area that you know that you collab with, that you did something for? You know, I know there's a lot of yeah. people out there. I'm probably gonna forget some niggas. Y'all niggas don't be. You feel me? Man, you don't gotta be everybody. Man, but shit, before that goes, shit, Stalin. Uh, Jay yeah, Stalin. Yeah, Jay Stalin, Young Gully. Filthy Rich, Lil Blood, Hella Live Wire. Uh, Russ, it's a lot of niggas. Thinks shit, Sue been on some of my shit. I am Sue. I am Sue. Uh, shit, I done had FBG Duck on my shit. R.I.P. R.I.P. Duck. R.I.P. Man. 
Shit, all them niggas even little Mister, R.I.P. Little Mister. When did you have uh, FBG Duck on there? Shit, what? I was probably like what, like nineteen, twenty or something. Few, few years ago. I was probably like a little older than that actually. I was probably like twenty five or something. But I had um, how the fuck did I make that happen? I had reached out to Cash. That's the other nigga from FBG, Cash out, and uh, sent that nigga some shit. And then I guess he had tossed that shit to Duck. And Duck threw that shit on his little mixtape, look at me. You feel me? So that was cool too. And have you have you kept in contact with him ever since or, or Nah you know? shit. I produced for a few of them niggas too. Yeah. Killer Kells. But to this day do you, do you, did you have any connection with them or Nah, I ain't really tapped in with them guys like that, you know? Cause I'm out here. I'm a you know, I'm a Cali guy. They ain't out of, they all ain't a shy, you feel me? So I ain't really I was just networking. Sending shit, you know. Hell yeah. You know the Bay the Bay produces a lot of different talent and a lot of different you know, like I say all the time, there's a lot of flavor in the Bay. You know, a lot of people come from different parts of the US or world if you wanna call it, and they come to the Bay area and there's a certain style that is out here. There's a certain you know, there's different, I don't know, I think it's the water that's different out there in the Bay, you know what I mean? And, and people drink that water and, you know, they pick up on game, they pick up on flavor, and then they go back to wherever it is, and, you know, they take it, they take the Bay with them. Do you ever feel like the Bay's, you know, they're stealing from the Bay a little bit, or they, you know, the Bay doesn't get a lot of credit like they should be getting? Honestly, shit, I think everybody takes from everybody, you know? You like what you like, you feel me? But I don't know. Turn up, turn up. I'm flipping and whipping the chicken. Turn up, turn up. Shout out my boy, go take it. Go, go, bitch. I be ballin'. That ain't nothing new. Cause that's the type of shit that I like to do. Yo, bitch, gone. She go fuck the crew. But that bitch thick as fuck. She made me go. Shit, all them niggas even little mister. R.I.P. little mister. When did you have uh, FBG Duck on there? What? Shit, I was probably like, what, like 19, 20 or something? A few, few years ago. I was probably like a little older than that, actually. I was probably like 25 or something. But I had, um, how the fuck did I make that happen? I had reached out to Cash. That's the other nigga from FBG, Cash Out. And uh, sent that nigga some shit. And then I guess he had tossed that shit to Duck. And Duck threw that shit on his little mixtape, look at me. You feel me? So that was cool too. And have you have you kept in contact with him ever since or, or Nah you know? shit. I produced for a few of them niggas too. Yeah. Killer Kells. But to this day do you, do you, did you have any connection with them or Nah, I ain't really anymore? tapped in with them guys like that, you know? Cause I'm out here. I'm a you know, I'm a Cali guy. They ain't out of, they all ain't a shy, you feel me? So I ain't really I was just networking. Sending shit, you know. Hell yeah, you know the Bay. The Bay produces a lot of different talent and a lot of different, you know. Like I say all the time, there's a lot of flavor in the Bay. You know, a lot of people come from different parts of the U.S. or world, if you want to call it, and they come to the Bay area. And there's a certain style that is out here. There's a certain you know, there's different, I don't know, I think it's the water that's different out there in the Bay, you know what I mean? And, and people drink that water and, you know, they pick up on game, they pick up on flavor, and then they go back to wherever it is, and, you know, they take it, they take the Bay with them. Do you ever feel like the Bay's, you know, they're stealing from the Bay a little bit, or they, you know, the Bay doesn't get a lot of credit like they should be getting? Honestly, shit, I think everybody take from everybody, you know? You like what you like, you feel me? But I don't know. I think the Bay get credit. The Bay get a little bit of credit, but it's not really a commercial area. You feel me? Yeah. So you know what I mean? Like, and niggas ain't about to brag about the the shit they do get credit for. So it's like, but I think niggas know. Niggas fuck with us, niggas. Yeah. Niggas from all other places fuck with us for sure. Yeah. No, I know. I know a couple of people from out of state that that's came to the Bay Area or the Central Coast, and 
they ain't never heard of no Mac Dre's, they ain't never heard of the I Am Shoes, and you know, people who, who really got a big influence on the Bay Area, like the Jack or two and stuff like Jack. that. Um, you know, a lot of people, they don't really understand what it's like to live out here, or they don't understand the lingo out here. And so when they listen to the music out here in the Bay Area, it's, it's kind of funny to them, you know? And, and they look at it as a certain different way, but as they live out here and they and they start listening more and more to the music, they start catching on to, you know, what, what's really behind those lyrics. Yeah. You know? Do you, do you feel like a lot of a lot of people overlook it or it's just like it ain't for them? I don't know. I, I feel like it's like when it comes to music in general, like the masses, they like different type of shit. They like antics more than all that type of shit. You feel me? And niggas out here, niggas in the Bay is more street. You feel me? They ain't really about to do all that shit that everybody else doing, bro. They not finna bust they stuff out as much. <clears throat> You know, niggas ain't trying to catch cases over a little bit of fame. Yeah. So it's a little different, bro. Yeah, no, I feel that. I mean, like the, like I said, the Bay, they, they're different, bro. Like, a lot of people was on some money stuff. And, you know, there's, like I said, there's so much flavor out here. But um, do you feel like you're you're in the right spot? Like, did you come up the right way, do you feel like? Or do you feel like you were overlooked and underrated? Like, because you did have a good buzz, like you said, right? With the beats and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, but shit, when it, it's like with beats, bruh. That's why I don't really be fucking with the beats now. You gotta kinda be a dick rider to be a producer low key, bruh. You feel me? And you gotta be able to go without respect. And be give niggas hella shit for free without appreciation. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it different. You feel me? That little buzz is cool, but being a producer ain't really, that ain't really it, bruh. Yeah. You feel me? That ain't, that ain't really it. So I wouldn't say all that. I would just say that I was a producer. And yeah. that's how niggas go about producers. Yeah, you know some, pe some people make it out. Some people don't make it out. Other people have, you know, different qualities that, that set themselves apart from other producers. And, you know, mm -hmm. like you say, rap is, is, is full of different. It's like being a chameleon there, man. You you adapt to different things and you are who you are. And that's what makes you different, you know. Yeah, yeah. So you basically, you're either a rapper, you're a producer, you're... An advertiser, whatever it is, you know what I mean. Yes, indeed. And, and with that being said, do you feel like because a lot of people from the Bay they get their buzz and they catch on and whatnot, and then they move to LA and they, you know, they try to do bigger things and expand their horizons and whatnot. Do you feel like the Bay is big enough to, you know, eat off of? You know, like there's a lot of people who are into music and there's different kinds of music in the Bay. Do you yeah. feel like it's okay to just stay in the Bay and not move to L.A.? Or do you have to move to L.A. and actually, you know? It's Cali, bro. For me, it's like L.A. ain't far. You jump on a plane, you be there in no time. You can live where you, know, you want to live, you feel me? You know, that's how I am. I ain't about to, like, base my moves on that type of shit. Yeah. You feel me? I still got to think about what I like and my peace of mind, you feel me? Yeah. But you don't got to. We don't got to. We right here. I can see if yeah. you was out of state. Yeah, but being in the Bay, you don't got to move to LA. Shit, mm -hmm. it's all it's all about. To me, the way I view things, it's all about how you advertise things. You know, it's mm -hmm. how you push your line and you know what you're willing to do to get to where you want to be. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you feel the same way, but obviously you had to do something to get your beats out there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't just word of mouth and you know, oh, he said this, he said that. It got to this, it got to that. You had to do something, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. What, what was it that you, you did to make sure that your beast was getting out there and you was pushing some kind of line? Shit, I was I was working, you feel me? You gotta build your catalog, bro. You gotta have enough beats to supply everybody, you feel me? You know, and just try to take over. That's how I went about shit. I was like, I know niggas ain't gonna turn that down for free, especially if the shit slap. Yeah, you feel me? off top. And then when other niggas hear that on their albums, they gonna come ask me how much it's gonna cost for a beat. You feel me? And that's when I dump back and make my chips. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I feel that, man. It's just, you know, it's all about advertising. You know, 
whatever you want to portray yourself to be is how you need to push. If you ain't pushing it that way, then you ain't probably going to make it that far or ain't going to buzz like it's supposed to be buzzing. Um, but one thing that stands about stands out about you that I really like is that you really got a distinctive kind of like vibe, voice, you know what I mean? And, and you really do stand out. Like if anybody were to work with you in the studio, and I've been in the studio with you and seen you on late nights, putting in that work and stuff, and working on beats and actually rapping, hell yeah, sure. Like people will understand. Like damn, he is. He's not just no ordinary rapper. He really does this. Like this is just him. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I get busy and for sure. I don't. Sometimes I don't know if it's just the beat that that makes you sound distinctive, or is it like it's just you? You're so versatile. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. Like, um, how do you feel about yourself? Do you feel like distinctive? Like I'm saying, or or what do you feel like? Yeah, I definitely feel like shit. One thing about me as an artist, I'm picky. You know, I'm real picky with my beats and shit. Shit could slap, but that don't mean that it's for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm real picky. I'll take, bro, hours and hours to find the right shit. You feel me? So that's why it come out like that. You know what I mean? Like, shit, sometimes that shit get annoying. Yeah, but hey, that's the first step. I can't yeah. cheat that. You know what I mean? So I'm real picky about my beats and shit. If I can't write a chorus, then I can't fuck with it, period. So I make sure before I buy a beat, you know, I sit there and I come with a chorus and I fuck with, then we can move on. Yeah, and that, yeah. that, come, that comes with just already knowing how to be that engineer behind the music, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Right? Yeah, I already know what I want my shit to sound like, or I know I can hear it, you feel me? Yeah. I got an ear for that shit, so. That's what's up, bro. So, what does your music have to like offer to people? You know, how do you want people to to? What do you expect people to to think or or see when they listen to your music? How how's it gonna affect their life? So yeah, one thing about my shit, you know, I grew up making all sorts of shit. You feel me? Then the shit didn't really line up with my own morals as a person, and I stopped really fucking with music and shit. You lose passion. Then I had to redirect my focus, you know what I'm saying? And it changed what I was doing this shit for, you feel me? Because people were listening and they can benefit from the shit that you went through and learned from, they can benefit from, you feel me? So I always make sure that, you know, all of my shit is authentic and shit that I'm going through now or have done, it all got a lesson, it all got, everybody can relate to the shit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Some shit 10 years from now. It's real life situations. So ten years from now, people still gonna be going through them situations. You feel me? So yeah. even in ten years, you can still benefit. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a circle me? of life. You know what I'm saying? Basically, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You know, um, each one, teach one. You know, and I ain't, exactly. I ain't out here making bogus ass shit, bullshit music. I don't really do that. You know, seldom do I ever make some shit like that. And um, and that's why I really function with with what you do whether it's just beats or it's you rapping because and you you work like i said your your work ethic is really expeditious bro yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying and you really just take the time and you actually put your your hundred percent into it you're not just like writing and then you're like oh well let's skip the beat let's work on something else yeah. no you actually trying to get things done and you trying to finish that work start where you finish you know yeah. what i'm saying and I know a lot of people sometimes have trouble doing that because they get stuck. They get that, what is it, that writer's block, that writer's mm -hmm. wall, you know what I'm saying? It's because the shit they be talking about. They ain't talking about nothing that's really, you feel me? That they can really expand on, bro. You can only say so much when you're talking about bullshit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, a lot of real recognized, real and real artists, they, under, they really understand each other when it comes to the art of music. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, how how do you get in the mode? Wait, first of all, is it beats or rap that you do first the most? I rap way more than I make beats now. Nowadays? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even. I barely do that. I take you know, I take a call or two, make some custom shit for some motherfuckers for a bag. But I ain't out here like with a beat page and all that shit. And yeah. Bumping out beats all night like I used to. Um, you know, I'm, I'm making music now. Yeah, okay. And so, 
what gets you into the groove of, of making music? Do you have to be in a certain vibe? Do you have to smoke before you, you start writing? Do you, can you make stuff from scratch? What, what kind of rituals do you have to follow every time before getting in the studio? Really, it starts with the beat. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you got I gotta find. I'm picky as fuck. Take, it takes me a long ass time, but shit, I find the right shit. You feel me? And that shit motivates me through certain topics. You feel me? Yeah. So I hear a beat, then it might make me think, you know, about some relationship shit or <laughs> think about shit grinding every day or shit. It's really the beat. You feel me? And then I go from there. And that's how I start with it. I start with the beat. So you prefer to to write first or you prefer to like just I show up in the studio and just start vibing and start going bar for bar and then stop and then jump back in bar? So nah, so what I do is I record. So I listen to beats, I find the ones that I like. I find a shitload of ones I like. Then I go through that whole shitload and I find the ones that I can write courses to. Once I write a course and once I come up with a course in my head, I jump right in the booth, lay that course down, then I write to the rest of the shit, you feel me? So I lay the course, that's the foundation right there, you feel me? Yeah. And then, you know, I just bust it down. I'm like, it's like freestyle writing. I, ain't, I don't really freestyle, but I write fast. That's why I write so yeah. fast and shit, because I'm like, Freestyling on paper, you and that and that's where the ex. When I say expeditious, yeah. if you don't know what that meaning means, look that up, because that's him in one word. If I want to explain who he is at, in one word when it comes to his work ethic, look up expeditious, and to me that is perfectly fitting with him. If you're an artist and you want to work with him, and you're in the studio with him, that's the word to explain him, because it's. You don't just sit there, bro. Like, I've literally been there and I've seen you and you're just like, you got a, a beat that you're feeling and then 10, 15 minutes later, if that, you're like, okay, I'm recording. Let's go. Yeah, Let's yeah, Press yeah. record. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, that that's just who you are, bro. Yeah. And I function with that. Hell yeah, yeah, man. It should just come with experience, man. So, when it comes to creating the music do you ever feel like I can't think right now I can't I can't really write stuff down right now like I'm not in the right space I'm going through what I'm going through in life right now and and it's taking a toll on me you know what I mean how do you how do you get past those moments because I know people go through those kind of moments and they don't know how to like block it out and separate life from business Shit, like I said, like, you know, it just depends on the type of artist you are, you feel me? I do this shit for me, too. It ain't just, you know, from people's ears. This shit is therapy for me. So if I'm going through something in life, that's fuel for what the fuck I'm doing in the lab, you know? Only time I really can't focus on you got 10 motherfuckers in that motherfucking loud as fuck. I can't barely hear the beat. Put some headphones on, I can still hear niggas screaming over that. That's the only time where I'm going to be like, all right, I ain't. Yeah. You feel me? But other than that, like shit, I put my my life into the music. Yeah. You feel me? That's what I do it for. I do it for me too. It ain't just for, like, for everybody else. Gotcha. So when you're rapping, who do you seek advice from? Like, cause you know, obviously you know you're dope, or you feel like you're dope. I'm not saying you ain't dope, but I'm just saying, like yeah. in general, is there someone who you're like? Hey, bro, check this out, because I know it's dope, but I don't know if it's dope. Like, you tell me from a different perspective. Shit, I don't really, shit, I don't really look, it's, I don't know, man. It's like, I don't really look for nobody validation when it comes to what I'm doing, you feel me, or what I'm putting out, you feel me. I will send all my shit to my brother just to see what he'd say. Yeah. You know, and I take some constructive criticism from him. But that don't necessarily mean that I'm gonna change shit. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, because it's raw, it's organic. This is this is me. You feel me? Cause so can't nobody really tell me about me. You feel me? If I'm fucking with it, I'm, then that's all that really matter. Keep it lit. I know I ain't putting out no bullshit. So basically, you, know? you just put stuff out there. Like, you know it's dope, like I said. 
but you just put it out there and you if it does numbers it does numbers if it don't then it ain't for that certain person who, who's listening yeah 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 I'm, I see you know what I mean it's like more of like a is the glass half empty or is it half full type shit you feel me whoever it reaches I'm appreciative for that you feel me if it's five five motherfuckers or five thousand yeah uh, you know what I'm saying that's that's it's progress, bro. Yeah. Uh, you know. And you're still giving the same energy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I, dis- I don't get discouraged from that shit. I know a lot of people do get discouraged. That's the thing. That's the hard part about rap or being in that certain music field is that people get discouraged because they're not seeing the numbers that they want to see. But, and then they start saying, all right, well, I'm done with rap because it's not doing what I thought it was going to do. But mm-hmm. really... You have to really go through the whole process of not getting numbers. All right, what am I doing wrong? I gotta actually start promoting different. I gotta start networking. I gotta start pushing a real hard line. And then at that point, if you ain't really doing all that and it's not really making numbers, then probably it ain't for you, right? Yeah, but shit. I mean, I always feel like, like I said earlier, bro. What's your purpose? What are you doing it for, bro? If you doing it for numbers, then yeah, you gonna be gonna get discouraged, disappointed, and stop. You feel me? But if you're doing it for for yourself or you're doing it to help other people, then that, that shit don't matter. You feel me? You just keep going, bro. Be persistent. You feel me? Yeah. All that shit don't matter. That's how you get discouraged when you aiming for that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? You it's, it's gonna be kinda hard to outdo yourself. Not even. It's gonna be hard to outdo all the other niggas that's thinking that way. All yeah. the niggas that's Doing reckless ass shit on the internet for views because they want to see the numbers. Yeah. So what you gonna join the circus? <laughs> you feel me? That's, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You gonna join the circus? So do you feel like you have to experience and or live some kind of crazy many life in order to have something to rap about? Or you know, cause there's like rappers like Kendrick Lamar's and J. Cole who just got so much gems to drop yeah. and they've lived a certain life but at the same time they're able to expand and, and give a real mindful thought into a rap and be like do this this way I wasn't no killer I wasn't doing this but this is how you get to where you need to go this is what you're gonna face, this is the things that you're facing in the hood or poverty or wherever you're going through, and this is how you still maintain and be yourself. I mean, I just feel like knowledge is knowledge, bro. And you know, you just born with that, it's ain't you not on you. You know what I'm saying? Like shit, knowledge is power, knowledge is wealth, knowledge is key, you feel me? So if you can drop that, you can, it don't matter where you from, bro. You don't gotta go through a bunch of shit. You can be an observer and see all that type of shit and it can make you feel a certain way. You feel me? Mm-hmm. It's from outside looking in, and, you know. It's just like being a teacher or something. You think all oh, the they ain't all from the hoods that the kids at the school is from. Yeah. They could be from the best shit ever, but that ain't ain't about that. You feel me? Yeah. It's what's inside of you. It's it's yeah. the passion inside of you, the passion that you you're willing to put out there and be like, it's not for money, it's not for fame. I'm doing this because this is what I feel. This is what mm-hmm. I want to do. This is what I enjoy doing. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And so, what kind of goals do you got for yourself in the future? Do you want to collab with anybody? Do you see yourself collabing with anybody? I mean, I got a couple collabs, but, you know, when it comes to that shit, I'm a little bit different. I don't really listen to a lot of cats, bro. That shit, I'm just being honest. I don't really listen to a lot of cats. So, you know, and I want, for one, I want people to fuck with my shit for me. I don't want people fucking with my shit for the feature that's on it. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm more focused on my shit. Like all my shit on iTunes, Spotify, all that shit. I don't got no features, yeah. zero, on my shit. I got features now that I ain't dropped yet. But shit, when it comes to that, I'm only looking to fuck with people that's different, yeah. genuine. You know what I'm saying? I'm picky, bro. Yeah. So I'm not fucking with niggas for views or to to steal they fucking crowd. To get some, you know, a quick buzz. I'm, you know, I'm trying to make some real art. You feel me? So, if I fuck with your shit like that, and I fuck with you as a person, then that's how I'm gonna fuck with you, bro. On the music shit too. Yeah, yeah. That's off top, bro. You know, I know there's a lot of different artists out there who got so much stuff that's backed up in their computer and files and stuff like that, and they just don't want to drop it just because 
they don't they don't want other people to feed off of their stuff and you know nowadays it's it's crazy like that there's a lot of people who are clout chasing and stuff like that mm -hmm. you know and they know that you got bars and they know that you're capable of doing stuff like that and they're like oh i'm gonna jump on his track because i know he might blow up or he might do some kind of numbers you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so it's, just, it's crazy like that man yeah i do it a little bit i just you know shit, i don't know i just don't fuck with niggas like that keep it lit yeah. I might jump on one of their songs or something. You know, if I got a little love for them or whatever. You feel me? But like, probably oh. they ain't gonna get on my shit and I'm probably not gonna you know what I'm saying? Like Yeah. Yeah, but I'll probably get on their shit just off the strength, off the love, because I can, you know what I'm saying, if I fuck with them. Yeah. Do you feel like the love is still there for the people that you've produced for? You feel like you could reach out to them and and be like, Hey bro, like you down to get on track or whether it's off the strength or whether it's, you know, money involved and whatnot, do you feel like the love is there and stuff like that, or? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I was never really close with none of them niggas. I always knew business was business, you feel me? You know, not a knock on it. It's not, no knock on none of them niggas, you yeah. feel me? Shout out to all them niggas, yeah, but exactly. it ain't really about that. You know what I'm saying? Not with everybody. Some people, it is about that. It's about the love, you know what I'm saying? And the art of the shit with other people, it's just about what they can get. Yeah. If you ain't giving them shit, then ain't a relationship to have, you feel me? But shit, I would work with anybody, you know? Unless you can do some real cat ass shit, and yeah, I, I, I work with anybody, you feel me? Shit. Hell yeah, I feel like that's huge though, bro, because you worked with, like I said, the Bay Area is, is so versatile and there's so many different kind of music out there. And you work with so many artists out there that's big right now, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. motherfuckers was rocking white tees, black tees, and yeah. fitted hats and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Rocking the same shirts for a week. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. now these motherfuckers rocking diamond chains, diamond wrists on, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All that stuff, riding bandlings and stuff like that. Yeah. It's crazy to see you, to, you know, yeah. like, be able to work with those people and, and hopefully they remember you because you was a part of their struggle, a part of their, yeah, their story. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? they remember. Shit, they, they will. Yeah. You know, you'd be surprised. Even if motherfuckers don't say nothing, I'll bump into some people and they'd be like, yeah, yeah, I know you, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. may not never say it any other time, but when I bump into them, it's like, yeah, you know. Hell yeah. So with that being said, how do you want people to, to see you? How do you want, like, when people see Marley B, Marley Boy, how do you want them to see you? Or how do you want them to, like, you know, paint that picture? <laughs> Shit, I just want to see me for who I am, you feel me? You know, I feel like, you know, I'm authentic, you know, different type of person, different breed, you know, so I just want them to see me for who I am and shit, if you fuck with it, you fuck with it, if you don't, you don't, you know what I'm saying? That's just how it is, that's, that's life for me, bro, you can't satisfy everybody, you know what I'm saying, like, my shit is for who it's for, you feel me? So, man... Fuck with me, I appreciate it. That's 100. If not, it's cool too, you feel me? Hell yeah. So, where do you want, where can people find Marley? Where can people listen to your music or li or follow your life, whether it's on social media or whatnot? You know, do you have clothing? Do you have a line dropping? Do you have music dropping? What is it? Shit, I, got, I mean, I got some clothing dropping in the future. Okay. But I definitely got music. You know, you can you can just Google Marley Boy, all the shit gonna come up. You can go hit iTunes, Spotify, uh, Amazon, YouTube, SoundCloud, shit, you name it. Yeah. And so it's there. M A R L E E B O Y. You feel me? So it's a lot of you know, follow me on IG. You'll see all the shit. What's all the IG work I'm putting in. It's uh at Marley Boy A D B. You feel me? A D B. Marley Boy, ABB, a dying breed. Yeah. Okay. That's the label. Hell yeah. Dying breed, LLC. CEO, that's me. That's right. So, you know, with that being said, bro, I appreciate you giving me your time. And uh, it's a blessing to have you here, bro. Because, you know, you really did some big things at a young age. And, and you really pushed on the line right now, like I said, bro. Expeditious work ethic. I cannot say that shit enough, bro. People don't know, they gon' know. You yeah, feel me? If you know. wanna work in Marley, man, bro, you gon' you gonna go for a ride, bro.
Because, you know, I witness it and I'm saying it right now. It means something. I wouldn't be saying it if I didn't feel it. You feel me? Oh, so, you know, That's like I said, right. I appreciate it, bro. Thank yeah, you for yeah, being on Urban Moguls with me. Shout out Urban Moguls with me. Man, for bro, show off top, bro. We we'll do this shit again. Hey. You feel me? Make sure y'all follow the whole movement. Bro. With that being said, bro, stay down to come up. Push that line. Stay ambitious. Do what you do. Don't let nobody tell you different. Uh, yeah. All right. The moment you let someone tell you different, and you start second guessing yourself. You've already lost the game. Yeah. All right. The game, it don't show love. It it, it ain't based off sympathy. Period. Yeah. All right. So make sure you do what you love to do. and push that line, all right?